Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the head facilitator and regional leads of Dare Arts based in Vancouver. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about watercolor tricks to show you how you can utilize some materials that you can find around your house to get some really interesting advanced looking techniques with your watercolor paintings. Let's get started. To start out, you'll need a piece of paper. I'm using watercolor paper because I have some on hand, but feel free to use whatever paper. Just be mindful of how much water you are putting on the page because if it is not watercolor paper, the paper can warp. In order to get around warping, you can prep your paper, whether it be watercolor paper or any ordinary white paper. Take some masking tape, and I like to tape the uh, tape down onto my clothes just a couple of times so it picks up a little bit of lint. This makes sure that it's still sticky so it will stick to the paper, but when you're done your um, exploration, you can undo the tape and it won't rip away any of the paper. So I like to go around and tape down all of the edges this will leave a little bit of a white border when you are done and you pull everything off, but it will also keep your page down. So the more water you load onto it, the less likely it will be to work. So I'm just gonna go around all of my edges. You may have noticed that I already have tape all along the paper. This is so that I can remember what household materials I'm going to be using so that I remember when I pull away the tape. This is a great way to get the most out of your paper, depending on what size you use, and also a really great way to explore because you can go ahead and write down in Sharpie right onto the tape uh, as to what materials you're going to be using and experimenting with. Okay. So everything is taped down. I'm going to just take my regular water. This is my go-to paint jar. It uh, is what I use solely for water for my paint. Um, some paint can have toxic properties in it, so it's a really great idea to uh, have designated water dishes when you are painting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have a test square. So I'm gonna start off right up here and I'm just putting some water all over the square. So this will just be, a, I don't know if the camera is picking this up, but I do have cat hair already on my paper. So that's actually another great way to add some texture to your paintings is invite your, your animals to have a seat on your paper. Um, <laughs> so I'm already picking off cat hair, that's hilarious. Okay, so I have this square all good to go and it is wet. Not too saturated, but it does have a slight sheen to it. So I can tell that it is ready to add some watercolor to it. Right, and so I am just using the Paul Rubens Artist Quality Watercolor Paints. This is my go-to palette. As you can see, it is well-loved. And I'm just gonna go in with this red color. Okay, and so there is some movement. As you can see, this is just standard, wet on wet. And I'm just gonna add some of this kind of reddish uh, purple hue. As much as I love the Paul Rubens um, set, I do not remember the names of the pigments. Um, I have the swatch set tucked away in my Paul Rubens box, um, but I have yet to remember what uh, colors, what the colors are by heart. Okay, so I'm just gonna let these two colors 
do their thing. All right, and I'm just gonna let that dry. So one of my favorite things to add to my paintings uh, to add some texture is salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, just wet. I'm very much a wet on wet um, watercolor artist. I much prefer it to going on uh, dry. So what that means is that you go directly on to dry paper without preparing it with water. Because I like a lot of movement in my watercolor um, images, I do like to stick with the wet on wet technique because it does invite more movement with the pigments. So I've gone ahead and I have put water across the square and I'm gonna go in now um, with a really lovely blue. All right. And there we go, just load it up. I've got two different shades of blue here. I'm just gonna load the page. So this is the first way to go ahead and add salt, um, which is adding salt granules directly on to the paper. So I've got all the blue there. So the important thing with adding the salts directly onto the wet painting is making sure that you have enough pigment and enough water on it for the granule to grab onto. One thing I've noticed is that certain colors will react a little bit better than others. I'm using blue because blue is one of my favorite colors to utilize this technique. So I just have my jar of salt here. I'm gonna open it up and just take a pinch and sprinkle it on. And already I can see that the salt is pulling the moisture of the water out. You'll be able to see this a little bit better when it dries, but it's adding a really beautiful kind of beaded texture. So I'll let that sit. This next technique also has salt, but it is salt directly added to the water. So I'm just going to give this another mix. So I've got a cup of water. It's about half a cup and I have half a teaspoon of regular table salt added to it. So you can tell that it's slightly murky and I'm going to add the salt water directly on to the paper. Make sure that all of the granules are dissolved in your water. I already have more. I'm finding more cat hair, it's hilarious. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with a different color. So let's do, um, I think I'm gonna do blue again. Um, blue makes me think of the sea, the ocean. Ocean is salt water, so it only makes sense. Go with a different shade of blue. And I'm just gonna put a couple of dabs and it is increasing its movement it's going out into these spheres that have almost like a furred effect at the edge. It's really interesting when you layer them. very calming to watch paint move. Even if you decide to do this and you aren't going to be doing this, you know, massive um, looking painting, it's just, it's really, really soothing and calming just to watch 
paint react with water. Okay. And I just noticed that I've forgotten to label um, with Sharpie what I'm doing. So this one here was salt water. This is salt. And this is just water. So as you can slowly see it change as the painting dries, you can see all of the differences of the techniques. Okay, so this one here, you will need to ask um, for some parental assistance. It is using uh, a little bit of bleach mixed in with water. So um, I have maybe about a quarter teaspoon to uh, about half a cup of water. Make sure if you are using um, any of the bleach or sterile alcohol that I'm using in this painting that you have parental permission and that you are next to an open window because there may be some fumes that come off. Okay, and right before I start, I'm just going to add bleach to the label. And let's go in with a green and see what happens. It is that furry effect, but a little bit different than the salt water. It's moving a little bit slowly. This next one here, I'm gonna be using gauze. Do ask for permission before you use um, gauze out of your first aid kit. So I'm just going ahead and loading up the square with water, going back in with my paint, and I think this time I'm gonna do a purple. Okay, so. So the gauze I have is pretty tightly wound, so I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit. If you use a gauze that has the loose um, weaving to it, that seems to work the best, but this still has an interesting texture. Okay, so now that I have the purple there, I'm just going to go ahead and put my gauze down. I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit. Also going to add a little bit of water on top just to make sure that the gauze is really stuck down. I don't want it to move. Okay, and I'll let that dry. So the next square, I'm just going to guess it, go ahead and add water to the square. And I'm going to go in with some orange and just put orange absolutely everywhere.
And I've got a cap full of 50% um, isopropyl alcohol solution. Again, ask for parents' permission before you use it. I do not have a droplet, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use a brush that I don't care too much about. It's an older brush. And just go ahead and put little droplets. So you can go really close to the page and see what happens. You can go from further away and kind of just flick your wrist and see what happens there. You could try layering um, with different colors after it dries to get a really cool uh, circular effect. side and right. Make sure when you are switching between the different mediums, if you are using things like bleach and saw water and alcohol, that you do not put them into your clean water. You don't want to affect how the other um, mediums are going to react with each other. Okay, there's a little bit of orange left on this page, so I'm gonna go in, I think, with a red to hide that. Now for this one, um, I'm going to be adding lace. Okay, and you can just drop the rice in random places throughout the paper. And this will do a similar effect that the salt does. A rice um, will pull moisture out. So when I was growing up, my Nona used to put rice in the salt shaker because sometimes when you have salt in a shaker, moisture can be attracted to it. And so when you have the salt in there, it will pull the moisture out and will keep the granules separate. If the rice granules on the paint, it will do a similar effect. It'll pull the moisture out. So we'll let that dry. Lastly, I'm going to be using some cling wrap. So just regular old cling wrap. I'm going to go in with two colors for this effect. I'm going to go in with the yellow. And I think I'm going to also go in with uh, a red. So now what you're going to do is put the cling wrap down onto your colored paper. It's okay if it gets some wrinkles in it because that's just going to add texture. So I'm just going to place it down and then kind of move the cling wrap on the top into an interesting pattern and just press down. And let it sit. Okay. 
I'm just gonna let everything here dry and um, I'll see you in a little bit. Here are the final results. As you can see, some work better than others. Um, last time I tried the rice, there was a little bit more um, of an effect that happened, but you can still see little rice shaped granules in certain areas. They all have very different properties to them. I think my absolute favorite is the salt. I do use salt in my work on a very regular basis. I think it looks a lot like snowflakes, but the, even between mixing salt um, right into the water and then using salt on top of the pigments, there are a very big difference between them. What do you think? Do you think you can come up with any other things that you may find around your house that you could use to try this experiment? If you do, tag Dare Arts. We would love to see it.